Okay, so Aina, or maybe Tom, if you yeah, it's just, like your so just a few words. So I met I know in Copenhagen. I was doing a course on uh, qualitative methods and science education, and we are both uh, in the field of computing education, more or less. So I was wondering, or I just um, thought it would be a good idea to invite her over, and um, yeah, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I know a PhD student at uh, Oslo Metropolitan University. And what, what's your field again, or what would you say? It's yeah, we can talk about it. Yeah, yeah. sure. But yeah, thanks for <laughs> inviting me here. Um, we have this uh, informal uh, presentation uh, roundtable discussion. Um, yeah, so my name is Aina Okkonen. I'm uh, originally from Finland, um, but I'm doing my PhD in Norway right now, in uh, also Metropolitan University. And um, at the Faculty of Education and International Studies, the Department for Teacher Education. Um, and my, yeah, my PhD is uh, about teacher education and computational thinking in schools, and I will tell a bit more about that. But it's really nice, nice to uh, get to present uh, this work uh, here to you guys. And also, if you have questions, comments, or anything, just like shoot. <laughs> whenever you want to, and also hi, hi to you guys on, on the Zoom. Um, yeah, so I'm part of a project, so I thought I would present a little bit about the project. Um, it's called Mascot. Um, it's the academic uh, mathematics, science, and computational thinking in schools and teacher education. It's a project funded by the Norwegian Research Council, and it's uh, led by our university. But we have also partners in Finland at the University of Helsinki and in Denmark, in Schopenhauer's Professional School, and partner schools in Norway and Finland. So we're working with uh, teachers, uh, closely with them. Yeah. So why not Sweden? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very uh, I, uh, I anticipated this comment <laughs> since uh, we are now in Sweden. Yeah. Um, I think it was a network thing, like yeah. people who knew people, and then yeah, asked uh, yeah the project manager uh, knew some people from Finland and Norway and uh, Finland. And yeah, we talked a little yeah. bit about this. And yeah, yeah. We know some people in Norway, but that would be Trondheim. Yeah, and exactly. If someone is leading from Oslo, it's at least not strange that Uppsala so is not part of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Interesting. But that's why it's uh, fun to come here and talk to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this project focuses mostly on. Um, primary school and lower secondary school, but also we have some teachers participating in the project also from um, high schools. But the focus is the um, school. So, so stupid question maybe, yeah. but I never learned it's lower secondary, what like, the ages are we talking about? Um, 13 to, is it 15, 16, like, yeah. Uh, so they started. Exactly, yeah. Okay. And, uh, it's a design-based research project, so so the the aim is to develop um, teaching resources, materials, models that that actually the teachers use, and we develop them in collaboration with teachers. So and the teachers also participate in the research to some extent. Um, so this is the overarching project which I'm a part of, and. Um, my PhD focuses more on uh, on assessing computational thinking. So the rationale for it is that there is still quite limited knowledge, quite not that much research on assessing computational thinking. And like this EU report just came out and it just so, highlights. Yeah. Sorry, there's a question. Which, uh, I'm not oh, sure. What can you moderate the? Yeah, or must maybe if you want to. Um, okay, oh, it's just Virginia making a comment. Then I maybe I didn't ask you to present yourself, Virginia. Maybe you could say just a few words. Hi, everyone. Sorry, um, I might need to leave at any point as I wrote in the chat because my son is sick, so I'm 
kind of uh, paying attention to two things at the same time. Um, but yeah, quick thing, I'm uh, finishing my PhD in the group on role modeling, computing, and engineering education. And I look forward to listening as much as I can today, otherwise to the recording. Glad that you're here. Nice to meet you too, here, on Zoom this time. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so this, there was this uh, EU report came out and listed like assessment as one of the four main challenges with computational thinking in schools. Um, and so, my topic is formative assessment of computational thinking in lower secondary schools, mathematics and science. I focus a bit more on mathematics. Um, that's also my background. Um, and uh, I have three studies as part of my PhD. So the first one is the one I'm going to talk about today. So it's like teacher's understanding of CT assessment, computational thinking assessment, and then um, teacher's formative assessment of computational thinking in a mathematics classroom will be the next study. And then the third one is still to be decided. So if you have any uh, ideas, I, I, can, uh, I can, I would like, love it. it. I would. Yeah, we'd be delighted to talk about that. Well, that's maybe why. you can expand the screen eventually. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> Come to himself. <laughs> yes. Okay, so just a little background. Uh, what's computational thinking in Norway and Finland? Um, these are the, the, the topic of, of this work is, is Norway and Finland. And um, in Norway, we have something called the algorithmisk denkeren, the the computational thinker. Um, in Norwegian, we have uh, the translation like algorithmic thinking, but essentially computational thinking. Um, with some key concepts such as like logic, algorithms, decomposition, patterns, abstraction, evaluation, and um, ways of working with computational thinking, which are um, tinkering, creating, debugging, preserving, and uh, collaborating. And this is what the teachers get presented with um, when they are now supposed to teach computational thinking in, in primary school and secondary school. Um, and in Finland, you have a bit like the Norwegian one teachers kind of then have this definition at least to work with. In Finland, there is no definition, but there are ways of working with, uh, with these competences. So you have computational thinking and inquiry-based work and production and programmed environments and how to operate in this. So this is kind of the backdrop. Um, and in um, both Norway and Finland, you have computational thinking as a part of the whole, the whole uh, compulsory education curricula. And just an example, in Norway, in mathematics, um, there is this competence aim uh, in 10th grade, which is the last grade of primary school, uh, or like, yeah, well, yeah, uh, which is exploring mathematical relationships using computational thinking. Um, and in Finland, for example, you have this um, criteria or evaluation criteria that the student understands the principles of algorithmic thinking. He can read here. Yeah, this was actually a uh, well, he or she or they can read, comment, interpret, test design and program small programs to solve mathematical problems. So this is in the context of mathematics and, uh, and um, it's integrated in, in, in mathematics. So a question there. Yeah. Uh, when you say that you have it in the curricula, is it explicitly mentioned in the curricula or is it that you interpret it as being present in the curricula? Uh, Do they mention computational thinking in the curricula? Yeah, they, they mention um, algorithms Denkande. Okay. Um, but the defi definition in the curriculum of algorithmic thinking is this, okay. which is quite similar to yeah. computational thinking in like literature. So, yeah. so hence okay. the interpretation that it's it is computational thinking. So they mention it specific. That, that seems yeah. the, the reason I'm asking is because I know that in the Swedish curricula they have intentionally avoided to use yeah. the term computational thinking because yeah. they thought it was too vague and general. So, so well, they yeah. don't mention it yeah. explicitly. Yeah, least. yeah. Maybe, maybe actually. But, but it's still there. Yeah. If you, if it far, far was actually there, you would yeah. see well that this is computational thinking. But it's yeah. only in math. 
it's yeah in math and then but then it's uh, supposed to be applied in science in Norway for example and in arts and crafts in Finland actually so um but there is also like programming is also explicitly mentioned in both in both uh, mm -hmm. countries um and um, my study is about, uh, it's an interview study with lower secondary school teachers. So um, I have four participants in the study. So no, four, uh, seven, four Norwegian and three uh, Finnish teachers in um, primarily mathematics and science, but some are also teaching other topics because yeah, uh, some teachers have multiple subjects. Um, and they have a bit differing amounts of experience with uh, programming and CT. So some of the teachers I interviewed have a very limited experience and some have quite a lot, like they studied actually computer science. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, the theory I used to analyze this is um, first like assessment theory, formative assessment. So this kind of assessment that you do during the process. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then also, uh, integrating computational thinking into curricula, a framework that I that I found in, in a in, in yeah in a quite recent book. I will show you later. And um, I've used qualitative thematic analysis to anal analyze the um, uh, the semi-structured interview uh, interviews. And um, let's see, I have some time still. Not that much. Um, Only about an hour and a half. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> yes. So, and the aim was to to map kind of teachers' perspectives on this whole thing of assessing computational thinking, because as you saw, the the definitions and the criteria, um, like exploring mathematical relationships using computational thinking. How do you assess that? How do you rationalize that? In a sense, um, and. Uh, I found this uh, framework of from a uh, from a book by actually Amanya Lav and uh, a colleague of his, um, and in this book chapter by Tanet, uh, he has a, or they have a a model for integrating computational thinking into subjects. So because you can, there are many challenges when you integrate this into a subject, and and this is one way of looking at it. So. For example, you have something called the primary objective and secondary objective, which is like, do you view computational thinking as as um, as the primary objective of the teaching, or is it is it the subject itself which is the primary objective, mm -hmm. and computational thinking is just a means to an end, um, and this becomes relevant when you talk about assessment because what do you essentially assess? Do you assess the mathematics or do you assess the computational thinking? or programming. Um, and then also with respect to knowledge, um, this model has um, some, they call it foundational knowledge. I assume there are like probably 10 different things that you can call this uh, or from literature, but but um, foundational knowledge, which is like programming um, core content knowledge. Uh, and then meta knowledge, which is like applying this, this um, Applying maybe these programming skills in more like open, open problem solving contexts. So this is kind of what I use as a theory for for analyzing also uh, some of the the teachers' answers. Mm. Yeah, so and yeah. Is it correct in this mm. framework they make a separation between programming and problem solving? Um, this level. Yeah, yeah, they, Range. they, yeah, yeah, they. I think the rational is or like the like if you have a problem, for example, in um, science, uh -huh, okay, so and so then so. yeah, yeah, and then you use maybe some in some part of the problem solving process you use programming or or yes. or something. so mental models, creating mental models so you'd mm -hmm. be able to apply the solution to a problem to into different contexts. Yeah, that's one way probably of yeah yeah. Another theory. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now I understand. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, 
so how do teachers understand this uh, computational thinking assessment? Well, um, they understand it partly as, as programming and coding assessment. So, so they assess the students doing, doing coding tasks. I'm not a um, computer scientist, so I might use the wrong terms, uh, but just uh, correct me. So, but then what is this like computational thinking assessment actually? Um, and that became quite evident um, in the interviews at least that it's a bit unclear. So this programming coding world, uh, the assessment of it was um, really, uh, yeah, the teachers uh, kind of had an understanding of that, but really not about comp what computational assessment, computational thinking assessment is, and formative assessment of it. But that, that's yeah. pretty surprising, I think, because I mean, most teachers that I talked to in yeah. the next audience, yeah. math teachers that teach programming, they, they they don't understand how to assess programming. They, they, yeah. they, they know how to understand the, or assess uh, computational thinking because they recognize that from math. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, when it comes to assessing the coding and the programming, yeah. they, they, they are strangers to that. So, yeah. so it's yeah. strange that it's the other way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But does that mean they have a view of what computational thinking is? Uh, the clear thing? I mean, many, many of the things that are included in the computational thinking and algorithmic thinking is also present in mathematics. So, so they, they know about how to analyze, generalize, model, mm. and all, all these things that, that, that we use to define computational thinking. They know that from mathematics yeah. uh, and can, can work with that, but they don't understand how to assess programming. Because yeah. how do you do that? Can it even be done? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and um, that maybe relates to the fact that it's like is computational thinking then is like having an algorithm? Is that then computational thinking? Mm -hmm. Or um, because I've heard similar similar. Um, if I may ask a question to yeah, you, yeah. but you yeah. are probably going to answer it later. Um, did they receive any proper training? To be able to do, you know, you're so funny. Okay, funny. Okay, yeah. And I mean, that's also, uh, of course, like um, main, major, major challenge. And in, in, in that way, maybe this whole like assessing computational thinking, I sometimes thought, is it a bit premature? Like, should we actually not focus on the assessment part yet, but on actually like learning? The, the the subject itself or the topic of, of uh, programming uh, or teaching that to teachers first but then on the other hand when it's in curricula it requires assessment mm -hmm. um so so it's what what um, many teachers have to do so basically what they did in sweden was that when they introduced programming in the upper secondary school uh, lower secondary school mm -hmm. uh, the, it was in 2017. Okay. They said that, okay, now you have to do this within a year, but we don't want to give you any money to teach your training, competence training or anything. You just have to do it, figure out how to do it. Yeah, <laughs> that's essentially the same in yeah. both Finland and, and Norway. They have some now more teacher trainings, but yeah. still like teachers don't get. Uh, <laughs> it was really chaotic in the beginning because the teachers did. They didn't know how to do programming, and all of a sudden they were supposed to teach that. I mean, some people thought that, hey, I'm doing Excel, that is programming. <laughs> so, yeah. but, 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 I mean, but, but now it's, as you said, mm -hmm. they're, they're coming this uh, teacher training mm -hmm. uh, courses and stuff. So, mm -hmm. But I mean, it has been like a five year delay there. Yeah, yeah. And it will probably take some, as we talked about it yesterday, yeah. it will take some time. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So what the teachers, how they understood this programming coding assessment was like, um, or some tendencies that we saw here was like, they assess if the code works. Mm -hmm. um, and if the student understands the code. Yeah. 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 <laughs> No it's a dangerous territory that's all yeah we, we try to to say to our students i think or don't recall that that the, the most important thing isn't that you get the right answer it's the way you, that you yeah. code the structure that looks yeah, yeah, exactly. so, so yeah if it works it's, yeah. it's not the most important thing yeah. to us at least. and that's why i think that finding is a bit interesting yeah. um and but the, if the student understands the code um that's uh maybe then uh, yeah. Slightly 
their criteria. And, um, but on this uh, computational thinking part, which was much more difficult for them to, to yeah, assess, uh, you have this how to assess problem solving, how to assess problem decomposition, for example, which is a part of the Norwegian uh, definition at least, and how to assess transfer of knowledge. And here, one kind of solution that they solved to this was like having assignments, which you can, which in a good way integrate both uh, programming coding and, but also the transfer of knowledge, for example, like applying the solution to a new context. Um, yeah. But some one kind of um, um, yeah assessing programming is what most teachers describe when asked about CD assessment. But their understanding of CD is that there is something more to it. So many teachers were like, "Yeah, I'm assessing programming now, but but I would want to assess computational thinking, but not really sure how to assess this." I think I'm actually. Now, quite running out of time. So, um, there's enough time. There's an hour. Okay. Who told you that you? <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about like twenty minutes or something. Ah, yeah. Okay. I mean, <laughs> but we, we had the comments. And, yeah. We, we usually go until three. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, uh, I have some excerpts from the from the interviews um, to illustrate a bit this mm -hmm. um, that it's it's like something more so. Um, this is Finnish teacher, it's like probably like doing such tests or something like making a flowchart. Maybe how would you break down this problem and such mechanical work, but then I don't know on a larger scale if it makes sense. Yeah. So that's probably the biggest challenge assessing this CT as a whole. So they see like assessing CT as a quite big thing and um, um, yeah. Interesting for me, the choice of mechanical work in breaking down the problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's sort of when you kind of see it as a recipe, but of course it's much more involved, right? You, you, you can't it's like break it down, you follow this kind of mechanical kind of rule. I think that's mm -hmm. what they mean mm -hmm. here. But how do you do that in a proper way? You start start thinking about it. If it's a proper or good way to break it down. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, and, and maybe also if you think about computational thinking as more this open problem solving mm -hmm. um, kind of strategy where you have like very many like different things and, and for example, but then in, in, uh, so in do, critics or in a, in a mathematics problem more. So, so is problem solving without Computers. Mm. I mean, non-computational thinking, problem solving. Yeah. Is that part of the curriculum? Do they um, do problem solving that doesn't involve computers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so, uh, and still, teachers find it hard to evaluate mm. problem solving that involves computers. Mm, mm. Yeah, okay. but I think you. If I go back to, mm. I'm looking at professional competences mm. and assessing mm. that, and I think you are. I think you're right, though. This is what they normally do. But I think they are also very unclear about how do you actually assess mm -hmm. it. It's, you could probably see it is a good one, this is but someone who can do the problem solving, but how do you put a number on it? I think yeah. that's where the problem yeah. um, mm -hmm. and, um, and of course, I think you're, uh, it should be about doing this window without the computer. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't, and, and, and in some sense, if you do it without the computer, well, it's what you do normally. Mm -hmm. But I, but here, I think it gets to the point where you also have to assess it. Mm -hmm. Whereas previously, you kind of didn't assess it or you had some proxy for how to assess. And so, yeah. and anything that's kind of complex, Mm. If you can assess it, you're gonna be um be nice. Yeah. You, you don't really know what to do. Mm. We kind of want more. Oh, here, do you can you solve in math? Mm. Can you can you use this formula or whatever? Can you make a derivative or yeah? Yeah, yeah but, but because my experience is that once you get teachers to understand that problem solving with CT 
is very analogous to problem solving without CT. Mm -hmm. it, it's the same process, just with slightly different tools. Mm -hmm. it, uh, I mean, when they get that, it's like an aha moment for them. And they mm -hmm. say, oh, I can do this. I didn't think I could do this, but mm -hmm. I can actually do this. Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, uh, yeah. you assess it. If you start thinking this is what you're going to assess, not something yeah. where you, this is kind of part of the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In, in Sweden, we made it uh, easy for us in the schools. We said that we're not going to assess program or computational thinking. We're only going to assess problem solving. Mm -hmm. In Grundskola? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they, 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 they have to learn programming as a tool, mm -hmm. but they don't have to be assessed on mm -hmm. being able to program, mm -hmm. only to use it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> that is yeah. Interesting. And here you're also having figured that isn't it in algebra? Yeah, in, uh, also, in the math subject. Yeah. Right. So so we learn the basic in the math subjects and then it's uh, being applied in many different subjects, mm -hmm. like in physics and chemistry, they work with modeling and mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that. Is, is, that is that explicit? Yeah. In in the science curriculum? Uh, in the what do you mean by science? In like in like physics lab, lab plan, yeah. yeah. The, in in the physics uh, subject, they're supposed to work with uh, modeling, modeling of physical phenomena. Yeah, mm -hmm. but but maybe the wording is modeling, it's not programming. Uh, it's modeling using digital tools or something like that, mm -hmm. which it could be programming, but it could also be something like, that. But I mean, Microsoft Paint. Yeah, drawing tool. But I mean, in, in the supplementary material, they suggest that you can maybe write a program that simulates or models yeah. some yeah. kind of physical phenomena that the students get to work with and mm -hmm. uh, change and do what if mm -hmm. studies and stuff like that. So, so they have it, but it's spread out, out over different studies. Mm -hmm. I, I know they mentioned programming explicitly also in like technique. Yeah, programming of uh, digital. Yeah. Uh, circuits or devices, it's artifacts. Yeah, art mm -hmm. and it's artifacts. Yeah. 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 Is it is it artifact and what is it in Swedish? Artifact. Yeah, it's a Swedish word. <laughs> okay. yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. Perhaps see if like there are comments from people online or something they want to add to, but they okay. didn't say. Oh, they can there. write in the chat if you have. Oh, there, you there is. Yeah. Yeah, sorry for interrupting. No, no, I know. I I think it's fun. Thanks for. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, but that's a good point with the problem so connecting the link. But also the curricula are go they they seem to be going towards like more this open, open ended problems and and like explore at least in in Norway it's like it's a lot about exploration and stuff like that. And but when and they do that, how, what kind of help do they get in actually assessing it? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm kind of curious about that. I mean, it's one thing to say this is what you kind of do. I mean, yeah, yeah. I guess in Swedish schools they are supposed to be doing more research, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. that thing is, yeah, yeah. Seems... We don't tell them how to do it. We just assume that they can do it. That's what they. That's what the teachers are supposed to learn. It, learn when they do their problems <laughs> by magic. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, one thing that I thought. And would have been, uh, I don't know if anyone have looked into this, but, but if you think about these problems online mm -hmm. without versus with uh, computers, I mean, to study the knowledge transfer among the teachers mm -hmm. uh, in, in going from a non computing perspective on, on these skills to a computational thinking perspective, it's, it, it would be interesting to investigate a little bit what they can learn from what they knew, actually knew before, mm -hmm. or how much they actually have to learn. Mm -hmm. Because I suspect that many of them are worrying too much. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I my, yeah, kind of research made comes to the, the thing that, that from working with teachers. So. The only feedback that I can offer with respect mm -hmm. to this is, um, I'm pretty sure you have, um, uh, the paper thinking about computational thinking that was mm -hmm. by Valerie Barr and it was cited over a thousand times mm -hmm. and uh, it explores the issues with computational thinking with students at K stage K-12. Mm -hmm. Be mindful that's American Center. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to uh, uh, instructors in that case, teachers experiences. Mm -hmm. So maybe that would be something that you would consider and then 
you look at the recent publications and then you work your way backwards if that makes any sense mm -hmm. so that we can say yeah assessment yeah 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 you got uh, several upon that paper or something yeah mm -hmm. but there is a lot of research oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely this so yeah so, so it, maybe I missed this. Mm. It's a meta question, a bit more. You said that you're not a programmer, you don't have a programming background. No, no, so no. what is your background? Uh, applied mathematics. Okay, so I had to learn it. <laughs> <laughs> without computers. Oh, well, 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 well yeah. Yeah. TBD. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. No, no, it's a yeah, relevant question, but yeah, yeah. and um, it's also a fun, funny thing, and that's why I think it was really interesting to to be invited to this group because, um, so we are doing a whole project on computational thinking um, in in the teacher education and um, we don't have any, but like computer scientists with us on the, on the team. But I think uh, that's kind of interesting in many ways because mm -hmm. sometimes you would, I think one problem is that the computer scientists think we own computational thinking mm -hmm. and yeah. we have the real, kind of answer to what it is mm -hmm. and what it should be and sometimes I have a feeling that like Lush Hockey was saying here if you kind of take off the dress you will see this is what you've done already mm -hmm. but in many ways I think the com computing people have kind of wanted to keep the dress on because they that would mean they would have control over what it is mm -hmm. and the uh, so, and that scares the mathematical mathematicians away. Yeah, <laughs> but in many ways, I would say almost any subject could definitely yeah. be doing this. But maybe they don't need to use all the computer science terminology, mm -hmm. which is yeah. In, in Sweden, uh, sometimes we talk about you know the big five. Okay. The, 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 to about some five core skills. I don't remember what it is, but it's like problem decomposition. Yeah, and st st stuff like that. But it has been along for around for a long, long. Time. I think programming is part of it. It's programming, problem decomposition, uh, problem abstraction. Okay, then it's a different big five. But, but but these big five have been been around in teacher training programs for like two decades. Isn't that like reading, writing, or no, 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 no. problem decomposition, abstraction? I, I can Google it, but but, but I mean. It, it turns out, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's, it's, it's that, that list. It's yeah, exactly. the one that Frederick Heinz and yeah. have been put yeah. into. And, and it turns out that we thought, or at least we thought, that computational thinking is just big five with computers. Mm. So, so it's one something that's been, been in the teacher training program for a long time, but this time with computers. Mm -hmm. Do you know this CS Unplugged curriculum mm -hmm. from yeah. Australia? From Australia? Yeah. Yeah. New Zealand. New Zealand. New Zealand? New Zealand. Oh, she was far away. <laughs> but I, like, I think it's like that as well. I mean, it's lots of computer science stuff, but yeah. I mean, it's no, it's no computer. Mm. But I mean, like, it's definitely like very al algorithmic. Mm -hmm. Think on that. If you do these steps yeah, yeah, in this yeah, order, then yeah. you, with this input, you'll get this output. Yeah, and... yeah, yeah, yeah. Many many teachers start or like in primary grades, they they start with that and then yeah. progress. And it's kind of like assessing that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then, then again, you can, yeah, that can start in a whole other discussion about, like, is that then computational thinking? If you never have the aim of, of at some point using a computer, just writing recipes, basically. Yeah. But well, is, is it? Sorry, I mean, we're we're we're, we're, we're roundtable discussing. Yeah. But is it written in the curriculum that the students use a computer? Um, it's written that yeah yeah yeah. So it is yeah, yeah, yeah. for for different grade levels, or I mean, maybe uh, not year one. Yeah. The first grace, I think, but yeah. eventually. Because I, I think we have like for years one, two, three, it's just like, you know, it can be analog. Yeah. yeah. And then I think yeah. digital tools. Mm. Is it in years one? Yeah, yeah, in the in the log start, it's like digital tools. Then they mention programming in the middle stadium and text-based programming in the study. Yeah, yeah, I think in years four, four, five, and six, then they actually say like programming in a visual visual program. Individual programming, yeah. Yeah. But but I think that's kind of also interesting because I think you're moving away from the core of what computational thinking is. When and you're kind of when you start to specify it as you have to use a computer here, or I, I don't think that's 
I mean, that's one way of thinking about it or using it. Or, but if you, to me, at least to me, when you if you talk about computational thinking, it could be in any with any tool in many ways, or just in the main thinking. Thinking, I agree. If you have to use a computer, then it becomes something different. Mm -hmm. So, so. Sorry, I can't help but asking this question. Though. So when we have our computer bachelor students and the IT engineering students up there, they've been here for two years and we taught them all the program, you know, and the operating systems, and everything. I mean, we've all heard about how IT people reason about normal things in the real world, like if it was a computer problem, mm -hmm. like, like they, they talk about- Like relationships? Yeah, yeah like relationships. <laughs> they, they start being, uh, talking about parallel process. Yeah. They start thinking like, like a computer, is that computational thinking? And they start thinking like, about yes, wondering, everyday yes. uh, actions in a computational way? I think it's in many ways it sort of sums from that because I mean, if you think about operating systems, parallel processes, and then they're talking about, well, they're setting it in a real world scenario where, oh, the kids are screaming or someone is hurting. Yes, you have to make an interrupt, and, and suddenly you're in a yeah. Yeah. And All these computing terminology are in solutions for real world. Exactly. And I think that's kind of where this comes from. It, it's like, oh, this is such a good way of. Viewing the reality. Yeah, it's than than I think it's reality. also related to just plain language. You get into yeah. this group and it becomes a language and a way of thinking and abstraction. Mm -hmm. And then you start to see this new abstraction everywhere. It's just whatever mm -hmm. thing you do, you see, see the same thing happening. It's a language. Yeah. Thing, yeah. But that's probably, I, like, that's a big part maybe of computational thinking that you, you know how to um, kind of solve real world problems. Um, somehow with uh, or at least approach them. Yeah, yeah, but maybe that's the first step then of kind of if you think of if if because potential thinking is often like portrayed as from like one problem solving. Uh, are there like levels aspect. to computational thinking? So you have beginner computational <laughs> thinking and advanced computational thinking. Maybe. When you start doing that first, first search in the uh, <laughs> where keys, for instance, <laughs> <laughs> so, something like that. Yeah, but there is like yeah, there yeah, is first search you know, in the closet. It's like yeah. where are they? It's always in the last place you look. But but I'd say about computational thinking in like education, it's uh it's really like no, there there is no one definition. It's really like a myriad of definitions and uh, and that's part of the problem, I think. Uh, absolutely, and also these um translations. Uh, oh, oh, Justina. Yeah. Uh, Matt, could I just say something? Oh, oh yeah, sure. Let's see if we. That's Nina. Yeah. You hear me? Get you on the screen. Absolutely. Well. Uh, please go ahead, Nina. I'm not sure if I'm on a giant screen or and if every can. Not yet. Not yet. One second. I'm trying to get you there. Can you yes. all see oh, and yeah. hear me? Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, I can yeah. hear you and see you, Nina. Nice. <laughs> Thank to you. you. Uh, firstly, really interesting talk and and. Uh, it resonates so much with my own work. So I just wanted to add a bit about uh, uh, the strands that we are working it with and which might be helpful for the discussion that you are all having. So we are um, following the Massachusetts State Curriculum for Digital uh, Learning that has specified five strands for kindergarten to second grade. And these are uh, abstraction, algorithmic thinking, programming, uh, data, and the last one is modeling and simulation. Mm -hmm. uh, and our challenge is that obviously if kindergarten and to second grade, they don't use computers and uh, they don't do programming. And our task is to design uh, computational assessment tasks. So we are working within these uh, five strands. Uh, and as you can see, the emphasis is not on programming in the sense of using a, a IDE or, or, or a computer. So it becomes much uh, more challenging for us. Uh, what I'm going to do is in the chat, I'm going to put a, a link to the uh, the award that we received. And I'm happy to uh, answer any questions for anyone who wants to email me later about the kind of work that I'm doing. We are now in the second year 
Uh, but this is really interesting for me to hear what teachers think and how much uh, they are uh, looking at programming as a way to assess computational thinking. So that's a nice insight mm -hmm. that you have given me to, to look at. So thank you. That's really nice to hear that. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it can be interesting to someone else as well. Um, and it, yeah, should I click the link now? Should we look at it? Yeah, maybe I can check it out later. But thanks for. Uh, yeah, thanks you for can it. save it for later or click it now. Yeah. I just, in case you wanted to follow up with me. Yeah, to know what I'm doing. yeah, yeah. I would like that. Is, yeah. is the chat saved with the recording? Yeah, usually. Okay. Yeah, you can do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it's interesting. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Uh, now we interrupt. This was a major interrupt. <laughs> Let's return to the main thread, right? Pop. 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 The address on the stack. Yeah. It's um. Re reloading registers. Uh, yeah. Also, we got this comment from Justina. Just looking at assessing programming, so mm -hmm. you know, like in Norway, so yeah, yeah, probably have some reason to connect with her if you haven't. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's in Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah, we have the, the I mean, the Norwegian definition has the abstraction and and problem decomposition, but many many like even the teachers who have training in in computer science in some way were really uncertain how to assess, for example, yeah. problem decomposition mm -hmm. or abstraction mm -hmm. when when like yeah lower secondary students are working with math assignments and they are have, they have some programming components maybe. In the math that's that's ironic because maybe abstraction or problem decomposition would be tools for solving. Yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and maybe the question is also like, should this be assessed in mm -hmm. as such? Is it an aim to assess? Well, for example, for interesting operating systems. Do you yeah. assess uh, abstraction? Not in the part of the operating systems part, but in the projects part, we even say well, it's something we did it. But not explicitly, it's like just part of the project assessment. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, I mean, we see it's a very important part of operating systems understanding them, but I think it mm -hmm. might be something you're not used to. Or... I think I think it's maybe as like if you have it like a seminar for operating systems and like as like describing scheduling students yeah. will describe yeah, it in different abstraction yeah, levels. Yeah, I think that's how they you, yes. you know they, they they jump back and forth like in some yeah, yeah but maybe I don't know if you start. Someone is putting a finger on saying, "Do you assess um, abstraction?" Yeah. Then maybe you get unsure, yeah. even though mm -hmm. it points out you probably do that, but mm -hmm. maybe not that. As like a byproduct of assessing other knowledge. Yeah. 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 Explicitly. Yeah. But what's interesting, I think, also for programming education in uh, in Hexad uh, many times is that the mathematics is used. As a context for mm -hmm. programming exercises, yeah. but also programming is used as a tool to explore explore mathematics mm -hmm. uh, using computational thinking. So there is this duality between these two yeah. Uh, yeah. subjects or skills that, yeah. that is very interesting that, that students are are moving between. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. they're using programming to learn new math, and then they apply that math in the, in the programming exercises and. Yeah, it's yeah. a very back and forth learning process. Yeah. Yes. and um, that's what I try to kind of capture with this framework thing. Like, yeah. is it the is it is the objective to learn math in a way, or is it to learn programming, or or is it both maybe? And or you or, say they used used to say learn to code, code to learn. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Isn't that what the, the scratch people are saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. So coming back to you, Mas, I think when I heard your question was, I was thinking about assessing their own ability to abstract, and you were probably mm -hmm. thinking more about understanding existing abstractions. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, I think we got li I got a little bit blind because pretty much everything we do is abstractions mm -hmm. in computing. So that, in that sense, whenever we teach something in computer science, at least in operating systems, everything is an abstraction or something. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's the only thing we're talking about, actually. Mm -hmm. 
the ability to come up with all obstructions is a different skill set, uh, I guess. But, especially mm -hmm. networking, because you can't point on anything and say, look, there's there's the internet. Yeah. <laughs> the, it's all, all a mixed mashup of abstractions. And then I think also abstraction has maybe a little bit of like just time difference in math, like what do you mean with abstraction yeah. in mathematics, for example, in a mathematics context, and what do you mean with by abstraction in a computer science context? Yeah. But, I suspect that it's a but me and Alec, we talk, we talk about this all the time. It just seems to be like crucial skill set or whatever. So, to the, how easy do people have to grasp and deal with abstractions? Mm -hmm. Seems to be really mm -hmm. key. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Can quite move between levels. Yeah, yeah, the same thing. So, and some so, people have really hard time yeah. doing that because their brain is are wired in a way that makes it hard yeah. to. Accept and grasp new abstractions and mm -hmm. integrate them in the this is what is on the basic programming courses we have to my it's in, in my pillar, it seems to be one of these identifiers. I think this is well at high school students that just like go like they uh struggle to have like high levels of abstraction just because they you know they just drill down and they just want to understand that you know how like the architecture works at the binary level mm -hmm. and they're just like this is how it works and it's like well is there you know like a higher, like an easier way to explain it without using. But we have a, a bit of a different thing, but I think it's really relevant, relevant here. Is we had a, a teacher who taught the SDS students and the engineering physics students the same course. And he said, these SDS students, they really can't do coding or programming. Mm. And then we had a meeting because he was so upset. And partly it was also like, the STS students were in the second year, the engineering physics students were in the fourth year. Uh, so there's some inequality there. Is. But social so, technological systems. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there are yeah, in, yeah. In, in for the many other the the yeah, yeah. It is not the real engineers, these yeah. are the fake engineers. I'm sorry, I, I thought my view. Mm -hmm. But anyway, they so we had a meeting with this teacher and he was trying to describe the problem and he was like, yeah, well, these SDS students, they are very good at grasping the problem and decompose it, decompose it, or make it so called decompose, make it decompose it. Decompose it, yes. Yeah. And then sort of and and then but when it comes down to actually writing the explicit code, they get stuck. Mm -hmm. And then he was describing the engineering physics students who thought of didn't do anything out of the pet. And they were just coding. They were on group force with it. And when he, it wasn't that when he was describing this, that he seemed to be, we mm -hmm. say there is a problem with engineering physics students as well. But We've all been there trying to go from problem description to working code without involving the brain too much. Yeah. <laughs> We've all done that. Yeah, no, but, but it was if we, if we start programming, there is. Yeah, and one, one thing that's kind of maybe related to that is also since now it's, yeah, it's, I think, where uh, if somebody needs to leave, it's, it's uh, really fine. Um, we have the room until three o'clock. I, I will have to leave in 10 minutes, but did uh, the, the you want to share some more findings? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I have, I have some more. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's move on. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. Sorry. Uh, that's actually quite the same. Well, here is one about there are some resources, but often they're not linked to mathematics in the way that one might want it to be uh, in the context of mathematics or you find things that are partly related to mathematics but ultimately not about that so this is about exactly what, what we were talking about earlier like this uh, is the teachers are struggling with like should they explore and um, should they assess mathematics or should they assess programming um, just in the context of mathematics um, but then there's also this interesting thing because uh, several teachers talk about both in Finland and Norway that students are really used to looking for the answer in the back of the textbook when they are doing mathematical problem solving. Mm -hmm. um, and now you can't do that. Um, and in that sense, like this um, 
computational thinking might kind of start to shape the mathematics culture in, in the sense that it goes more towards that there are maybe many, of course there is many possible solutions in mathematics as well, but but that the students really want to want to know that is this the correct answer or not, and not like learn to kind of critically assess their own well, solutions. I think in, in many ways there is a correct solution. I mean that's mm -hmm. kind of a very well maybe naive mm. view of what mathematics is all about. And some yeah, yeah, some yeah. teachers would say this also goes back to how to get to the answer. Mm. So sometimes, yeah. you, if you go another way, the teacher will say that's wrong, mm. even though you get the right answer. Mm. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh. and what are you assessing? I think that's... Yeah. Yeah. And some bits are more about religion than mm. true or false. I mean, there, there might be 10 or different culture. ways uh, to, to, to solve a problem, and the teacher thinks this is the better way, and some student may think, no, this is the better way. Mm. Yeah. And uh, you, you have to realize this also as a teacher that's uh, most programming problems can be solved in a multitude of different. Yeah, and the teachers recognize they kind yeah. of understand that, um, but they're, they're they're describing their students as really surprised when or like frustrated when they can't look up the answer. Yeah. In the end, um, so in that sense, this computational thinking might kind of contribute to these curricular goals of like exploration and more critical thinking and. I mean, this is also why assessment of programming, I think, is so hard because it's, I mean, if you compare programming in uh, in primary school to, to another subject, I would say it reminds both about crafting mm. uh, because you have a set of tools and you need to combine them in, in a way to reach a goal, but I mean, you, you can use the tools slightly differently and still end up with a wooden box or whatever you need to have. I think one, it's the same in programming. Mm. I also think what you get into is are you assessing the goal or the process? Yeah, that, that, that's yeah. exactly what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and especially with assessment, it's like you know, a student just hands in some code. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, okay, did the student spend you know, yeah, you know, ten minutes working on this or thirty seconds, mm -hmm. or did they get help from a friend? Yeah. Or... yeah. So what yeah. Do, uh, what do the teachers assess them? Do they uh, assess the resulting code or the yeah. process? Yeah, um, both. They, they this was also really um, interesting because when we asked like how do you assess programming, many said that uh, we assess the res we, we assess the code the result, and when talking about computational thinking, they viewed this as kind of the process of how to get there. Um, dangerous, <laughs> but I understand why they would do that. Yeah, yeah. So it would be interesting to hear them define programming because I mean, there are many, yeah, yeah, or maybe coding. It's you know, I mean, it's something that programming is coding, mm -hmm. and some see in programming as a problem solving process yeah. which involves coding. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, when yeah. you say that they assess programming, what do you really mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think here the it's, um, I understand that you kind of want to, um, dig deep into the words. On the other hand, this is also like teachers who just uh, try to make sense of, of the tools <laughs> and, and like the new new things and, and um, how to, yeah. But I mean, they yeah. also have the words. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. have to parse them and then say, okay, here it says programming. Okay. And if they then think that, okay, programming is coding, then mm -hmm. it's natural for them to assess the code. Yeah. 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 If they think programming is a problem solving process, then they will probably mm -hmm. assess the process. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Is this sentiment shared, or is it more concentrated in the Finnish population, or is it more concentrated in the Norwegian population, or is it they both share the same sentiment? Uh, this with that the programming. Yeah. Is, um, I think it was actually, let's see. Uh, this was maybe more in the Norwegian. Okay. Because um, it would be interesting to see now the American perspective. Yeah. yeah. But also these were just, I, I had seven teachers, so yeah. like, I can't say anything about No, no, that, absolutely, but, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But it would be interesting to see um, different perspectives. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's yeah. an interesting like, stick to both. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And also the, the Finnish teachers, since they don't have this kind of operational definition, yeah. um, they had more like versatile. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thoughts about uh like yeah more connected maybe to their subject than the original ones yeah but i can just say some uh, some final remarks that um so so they uh, 
they have uh, they make their kind of own interpretations of what assessing CAT is and um, and a lot about it has to do with like this foundational CAT knowledge. So so that's the program work and and how does it work? Um, and they are unsure of how to assess this kind of CAT as a larger thing. <laughs> Um, and then there is this unclear connection between the subject and CT with respect to assessments, procedures parts. And also that exams become really influential in oper operationalizing CT and assessments because when there are no criteria that the teachers follow, can follow or, or need to follow, they look to the exams, like central and national exams. Mm -hmm. And there, the so most, how do, do they look like? Yeah, that's interesting. They um, The most recent Norwegian one was um, flow chart, which um, was supposed to be, and, and it had something to do with like a Pythagorean theorem. So, and it was kind of a useless program in a way also, I think, um, that you had to, I think, write down in code the flow chart. Yeah. Um, but the program didn't actually really make sense. It was something like you could have calculated that like by hand uh, much. Right. And th th yeah. That is actually also a problem that m many of the problems that they are, we get to work with in programming exercises are much easier to solve by hand using mm -hmm. plain mathematics. Exactly. And, yeah. so, and then you get into motivation. And, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, this is, I mean I used to say to, to the teachers that I meet that, okay, it's so easy to make programming boring as hell. I mean, yeah. that, that would be but, 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 but they have to really, you know, make an effort to make it interesting and relevant, and then they shouldn't work with Agra and theorems, because that's easier to do by hand. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I have some even scare where they just use Python as a calculator in mm -hmm. a math book, like yeah. compute two to the power of 63. Yeah, I think that's really common. Um, and, and it's like, okay, write the pro Python program that computes two to the mm -hmm. power of 63. <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah, yeah. Th th this is real, this yeah. is authentic by you. Yeah. And that's why I think the yeah. task design, like designing good tasks, yeah. can be a good means of assessing, like if you have tasks that which re require some kind of application of uh, or like context, a uh, different context, but also like meaningful integration. I mean, the, to, to create such tasks or exam questions, yeah. I mean, that requires a quite extensive yes. understanding really? yeah. of um, yeah. computers and their abilities, but because the, there are some, we, we have like, uh, the classical example that, that we take in, in basic programming courses is, guess, uh, I guess, uh, computing Fibonacci numbers in oh, a yeah, yeah. way or something yeah. like that. And you can do it in a way that uh, generates double recursion and it will take forever, mm -hmm. like forever before the computation finishes. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you do this small trick, and uh, then you can actually do it in like a heartbeat, basically, with computing the same thing. So it's, these kind of things that, that you can integrate into computing programming tasks that are like more about, okay, about the limitations of a computer. Because some teachers think that they are, as, as long as I have a computer, I can do anything as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not true. I mean, you can be more stupid with a computer <laughs> than by hand, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, there are so many good examples. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These teachers that I interviewed, they were all kind of positive-ish towards uh, towards it, and that's not a coincidence. Some of them were in the project as well, but I have a colleague who who is um, who is uh, has worked a lot with um, just like primary school teachers who are really really don't see the connections between um, computational thinking or programming and mathematics, and are really skeptical and. Uh, so I think there is a long, the, the, yeah, if uh, this uh, will done, work will be done well, it, it has some work well, there. One thing you said at the beginning is that you as researchers are helping these schools and teachers that are participating in a project. To, to, or or developing tools. Yeah. But, but, but at some point you also said that you have no CS people involved in this project. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you have no CS didactics people involved in this project. No, I don't think there is like any... And still you are developing tools for the teachers to use to assess CS 
Well, yeah, not as a thing yet. No, I've got the thinking. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, it seems like yeah. Yeah. It, it seems like you might miss some yeah. Yeah. some things that maybe yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. not saying that you you will do it, but uh, there is and maybe yeah. a good thing that we don't bring in there computer vision, computing speed. Or yeah. experts that they might maybe we should start writing exams about wave theory. The same as processing. Um, that, that is a question or a concern that you're going to get a lot. So mm -hmm. just consider it as in a chapter threats the validity that there is. Yeah, 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 yes. Or intentional design. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, like 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 you said, it's very easy for computer science people to make programming boring as hell. Yeah. I, I think like uh, one of the things it's even really, easier than making math boring. <laughs> I, that's one of the things that I think is really good, like about Scratch. Mm -hmm. You know, Scratch, it's block programming. Scratch is fun. Mm -hmm. If you have kids do it, you can click and drag. You know, it's not, it's not specifically like it's not like Pythagorean mm -hmm. theorem. You know, you have a little cat goes around the thing, mm -hmm. a little dance. Yeah, and that's uh, like you it's know how I feel about Scratch, though, right? Because very for, for some students, it's very difficult to transfer the knowledge in you know Scratch to actual you know text based and... codes because they associate Scratch with being a game. Whereas they associate coding, for lack of a better term, as programming. The problem, I think, the big problem with going from Scratch to text-based programming is that Scratch is task-based. It's pretty advanced programming, actually. And if you want to do the same thing as you did in Scratch in Python or C, it yeah, becomes very, cool. very advanced very quickly. I mean, I think just losing the graphics. Yeah, like just the the thing about like going from block programming to text programming, like that's a jump. But then also losing the graphics, like that's also like you know all of a sudden it's like you're trying to program with your eyes closed. Yeah, especially mm -hmm. things. Yeah, but absolutely, it is uh, probably, and uh, that's why I kind of also wanted to come here <laughs> to to talk to you guys. Um, I don't think that the teacher. I mean, we have people who. I'm in a group of digital competence, and we have some some like well, work a little bit uh, programming didactics, but but not like a strong community of, of these people. So, um, if you have any tips or books or you know, <laughs> I uh, I think I can distribute the, those also within our group. And I, I super recommend CS Unplug. And I think some of the really great examples I've seen is like working with CS Unplugged in like the really young ages, because mm. some of the things are really good. You know, mm. you hand out papers and they draw stuff, mm. and then using those same exercises like in Scratch. Mm. So you know, they do like a little traveling salesman, or not? Well, maybe, maybe not that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you, well, they do. You, yeah, you can, uh, can, can I suggest the best challenge to do? Someone is saying something. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. I'm saying we have Bebra's uh, Bebra's challenges mm. on, yeah. on computer science. Uh, yeah. Up and still, uh, I think. Yeah, we remember mm -hmm. some of them they had, so sweet. But everybody disappeared. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The challenge is maybe to make it uh, relevant to the subjects that it's. I was thinking really code.org. Yeah. You know that? Yeah. yeah. I mean, all, the, all that material is really well thought through and it has good uh, teacher manuals mm. and stuff like that. So, so that's also good. But it's that kind of math, because that's the thing when it's like integrated into math, it should have something with that to do. Yeah, yeah, there, there are some. Yeah, I think they've had for the but I'm not sure. Yeah. But I think it also <laughs> comes down to. Where do you feel comfortable? Where do you go into dealing with it? Mm -hmm. If you come in from a computer science point of view, then you see things a bit differently, I think. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, and yes, of course, you probably want to integrate computing mm -hmm. into it in some way, mm -hmm. but I think it was a danger of making it too much. Because then, uh, again, I think you're no, that too. Oh, but you have to use a computer. You have to use this way or these words, these terms, these. Um, in, mm. in, in the worst case, you bring like a computer scientist person on board, and then they want you know seven or eight year olds to be like backwards sorting binary trees, and it's like it's easy. They can do it. Yeah, yeah. There's also kind of the opposite. If it's always integrated with pure math, every then problem becomes just a way to crunch numbers, which is. Mm. 
could be fun, but not for me. But so then you lose, in my mind, the more yeah. interesting aspects of this, the, the creativity and they able to problem much broader problems. So it's mm -hmm. all this tied to mathematics and just we apply this blah, 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 Newton's blah, blah, blah format. And then if you students, this, this is the only you can get doing it. That's mm -hmm. also a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You speak Swedish, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, so for lower years, like year one to six, have you seen this material? Ladder height. Mm -hmm. That's a Swedish te te yeah, it's in Swedish. It's a teacher material with, with lesson plans for different subjects like uh, technology, math, music. Yeah. Yeah. Who made that? Uh, internet uh, It's really, yeah. really, really yeah. good. And we also have something called Digital Electron by yeah. the Internet States Assembly, which is really good. Yeah. For different subjects on different mm -hmm. topics, so so um, that is something I could recommend mm -hmm. to look into if you want to get inspired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The material. Mm -hmm. But I think Corin, what you said there is um, the dangerous there that you, you connect it so up so much so hard to mathematics, mm -hmm. and and I think yes, you you are definitely missing a lot of mm -hmm. uh, options on how to deal with other things. Mm -hmm. We kind of computational thinking, mm -hmm. and, uh, and yes, it could be useful in math, but why make it so strong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. why it's, it's uh, math teachers maybe have the um capacity to kind the of least, the least resistance, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um and uh, how they recruit and train like well, I mean, thousands of uh, computer science teachers for primary secondary school. Yeah, right, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> but it's also, uh, Vicky Armstrong came to us in the mid 90s. She had a PhD in education, actually. But she was looking at um, how logical thinking would be a predictor for going into computer science. Mm. And uh, I don't think she find any, did find that there wasn't there wasn't a connection, but it's kind of like what what you assume. Mm. To be a programmer, you need to be a logical thinker. And um, and I think that's limits the way you see programming. Yeah. Mm. What would happen if they put this into the uh, arts instead of like producing digital art or whatever? Yeah, it's very creative people. They, yeah, yeah, but they, they in in uh, Finland they have it in arts and crafts as well, like as a, as a and also they have Mark Gustav, who's one of the big guys in, yeah, yeah. in education. He, in that group, Georgia Tech, he was um, taking media students, so he kind of used to create media as a way of. Motivating the students to in their mm. first programming course. Mm. And then, um, what I understand, that made it, that made these students learn better, mm. even though we took away content from the, uh, the first programming course. Mm. And then they had the second programming course, which mm. was not that updated. Yeah. And they actually did better than before. Mm. And they had a full, yeah. Normal first programming course. Yeah. Yeah. Same. But yeah. how does uh, Mark, how does he um, sort of integrate this computer science into media? Because then he also needs to know no, about know, this know, other topic. Know, right? This media student. So yeah. they kind of creating uh, images and stuff like that. And then you would, mm -hmm. uh, and how, how do you man manipulate images with sort of, you know, and, right. and like how do you use yeah. programming in order to do that? So in many ways, it was adjusting the assignments, but in order to have yeah. time for that, he also took away some of that. Mm -hmm. You have to learn about X or Y or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That's, that's then maybe he was able to do that. And maybe he's also competent enough to do that. But I don't think that every CS teacher can sort of learn new things. Uh, yeah, right. right. But it's also about what can the students do? Yeah. So I mean, the student body one is going to be learning. And, and, yeah, okay. and, and yes, we, 
if you don't have the com if you don't really know about art or maybe media, maybe it would be really hard to come up with with the ideas and what to do. But um, but many times <laughs> it's kind of like, oh, here are the uh, assignments you can do, mm -hmm. which is might not need to really be fully understanding about what what it is. No, exactly. I'm not sure it's relevant here, but I think it's kind of about where do you yeah, yeah. You put the learning and what kind of things are you supposed to be learning? Yeah, and how how what do you expect? Because maybe like also having this in compulsory education and for everyone, the aim is not to produce computer scientists out of every child in a way, but maybe to understand something about yeah. this what, kind of world that we live in. What is your opinion on having an integrated curricula with computing or, or mm -hmm. do you think that's preferable to having computing as a separate subject like they mm -hmm. do in the UK? Have mm -hmm. you considered that? Yeah, I don't know if I have a, have a unlike really form maybe I will know in the end of my PhD more, but but um at least in um because they've had before this new curriculum in Norway they had um IT or, or something like that as a mm -hmm. as a elective subject mm -hmm. but but i see at least that there is a value in having it as a compulsory subject for all and integrating it in an existing subject might make it like less kind of threatening in a way to mm -hmm. students okay. so it's just like okay but this is math or this is like science or this is just like exploration mm -hmm. basically and then there is maybe less um, resistance Fair enough. Yeah. Um, but mm -hmm. then again, the teachers are put under uh, really a lot of, uh, or <coughs> the teacher, they, they put a lot of expectations on teachers um, mm -hmm. with this integration. So probably, I don't know really, maybe some like learning the basics of, of computer science in a computer science class and then applying it in other subjects. I don't know. Because I remember from my high school education, so computer science was a separate subject as informatics and mm -hmm. that's kind of the same thing. But then you actually get a teacher who has a computer science background yeah. and wants to teach. Maybe. And there's a big shortage. There's a really big shortage of computer science teachers. So maybe yeah, was just, I was just really lucky. But honestly, that's yeah. probably one. That's probably a determining factor that you and I are both here right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. But. I mean, I'm just reflecting here that I really, really enjoyed that yeah. it being separate. Yeah. yeah. And, also, that because it removes the burden from the teachers mm -hmm. that they have to integrate it, so mm -hmm. but they don't know how. But I think in Norway, it, high school, it is a separate subject. Uh, you know, really? No, it's integrated in math there as well. In but, high school? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. But I don't know, maybe they additionally have the separate subject. That might be. Yeah. yeah. So this was really yeah. interesting. Yeah. I, I yeah. Thanks for uh, discussing. Thank you for maybe we should kind of end the official yeah. meeting. And I feel like I've come also for the uh, brain. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Usman, do you want to? Uh, so we're kind of wrapping up here. Do you have any comments? No, thank you very much. Uh, this was a very informative talk for me. Actually, I'm um, looking at uh, computational thinking and trying to see the, especially from a decomposition and an abstraction as a sub skill from it. So perhaps you have given me some ideas so where I can actually start looking from. So thank you very nice. much for that and good luck with your study. Yeah, I was also thinking about like looking more into those specific two things because they're, yeah. No, uh, from software engineering perspective, de decomposition, mm -hmm. Matt would agree, decomposition and abstractions really come in handy when they are designing software solutions. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to trying to create a link in that sense. Anyhow, mm -hmm. thank you very much. Good luck yeah. with your work. And, uh, we'll see you guys again. Thank you for attending. No problem. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Here. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.